Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Ajaz Ahmed and we'll be discussing what is happening in Gaza. Ajaz, this fresh attacks on Gaza, how do you read it? Is it basically because of the impending elections in uh, Israel? Or is it a deeper uh, strategic issue that Israel is trying to resolve? Well, it's hard to, to read. At a certain level, it looks like the replay of 2008-2009 invasion of uh, Gaza in which some 1,400 Palestinians were killed, 5,000 injured and so on. It was a devastating attack. That came immediately after the U.S. elections, before the inauguration of the uh, U.S. president and just a few months before the Israeli elections. And that is exactly the scenario right now. Obama has been re-elected on the, on the 6th, and this began on the 8th. Uh, and they're probably going to wind it up before 20th of January when he uh, starts his second term. So the timing is eerily like that invasion. Like uh, Operation Cast Lead. The, yes, the, the Operation Cast Lead of 2008-2009. December, January uh, that year. Number of people, including the chief of the uh, uh, army staff in Israel, have been braying for, for an attack. Uh, they're saying that we have to uh, neutralize this new capacity of the uh, missiles in, uh, in Gaza and so on and so forth. So they have been building up towards this, and it sort of appears as if they were just waiting for Obama to get over his uh, election campaign and, and, and do it. It all appears as if they are all set to, for a whole big invasion, a repeat of that kind of invasion uh, <clears throat> of Gaza. The Israelis seem to be. Just last time, their supposed goal, which is to take out Hamas militarily did not succeed. Right. In fact, right. the, the Hamas right. capacity to retaliate still That's continued. Right. That's, right. That's right. This time, why do, does Israel think it will be different? Eventually, what they achieved at, at, at that time could have been achieved without that level of massacre. Um, <clears throat> and again, one wonders what the real uh, agenda even then was. You will recall that most of the bombings took place in the north, where there were no such uh, missile batteries or anything of that sort, not closer to Israel. Uh, there is a view that the idea was to terrorize the population and make it flee, which has been one of the objectives of the Israelis. Anyway, to achieve what they set out to achieve last time and failed to achieve, now they wish to achieve. To really achieve it, they'll have to reoccupy Gaza altogether. Um, short of that, they cannot do it. Now what you have is that the missiles are not, uh, or rockets, are not controlled by Hamas alone. Islamic Jihad seems to have a more sophisticated, I mean quite sophisticated, Missiles now, in fact, one of the one of the rockets that fell outside Tel Aviv, um, Islamic Jihad says that it was theirs, and they say it was Fajr Five, which uh, Iranis have given them. That is what they say. There are other jihadi groups, not controlled by Hamas, who are rising, saying Hamas is colluding too much, Hamas is making peace with. Um, uh, Israel and so on, uh, these long-term ceasefires that, that they are constantly negotiating and so on. Uh, Hamas has not delivered. Um, you will recall that Hamas grew so much because the Palestine Authority did not deliver. Now the same discourse is happening in Gaza from With these Hamas. smaller groups. <clears throat> so if you now delegitimize Hamas any further, you may not achieve what is said to be the uh, objective, but you may achieve two other objectives. One, you weaken the Hamas, thereby you strengthen relatively these other jihadi groups which are under control of nobody. I mean, they may be under the control of the Qataris or somebody, but, uh, um, so, but they're not part of that process of negotiations with Israel. And secondly, one thing that is being talked about 
about which there isn't much evidence to my knowledge, is that there are growing fissures between the leadership of Hamas that is inside Gaza and the leadership, the Politburo members who are spread across the Arab um, uh, capitals uh, and now primarily uh, in Doha. Uh, that between the external and the internal, which is a classic situation of conflict. It is said that Jabari was part of Ahmed Jabari to which we'll come in a moment, um, who was the head of the military wing of the Al Qassam uh, brigades of Hamas, uh, was part of that conflict. Uh, representing more the internal forces as against the external forces, which are much more. And the external forces are said to be much more in conversation with Arab governments, particularly after Hamas evacuated Syria and went on uh, to primarily be in Doha, although they spread in some other capitals as well. Um, so, the, so it might well be that that is one of the uh, objectives. Uh, so so th there are sort of series of hidden objectives. If Israel cannot achieve its military objectives without full-scale uh, occupation, reoccupation of Gaza, at least for a period of time, and if it does that, then uh, it has other consequences. What does Israel gain in the region because right now the situation is that the Islamicist governments of Qatar, of Egypt, of uh, Turkey are all doing the dirty work of the Israelis in Syria. Yes, yeah, yeah, we'll just come to right. that in a moment. Yeah. Let's yeah. go to the Gaza issue further. Yeah. Right. As you said, Jabari assassination. Yeah. When particularly when there was already a ceasefire which had been negotiated by Egypt and there was also a proposal on the table for a long-term ceasefire with Israel, right. which had was negotiated, right. which was and negotiated. And Jabari was the man who was doing it. Key, key person and negotiating he it. received a full-fledged draft of it, which had come from Israel, approved from the Israeli side of his negotiators for presentation to the Hamas leadership just a few hours before he was assassinated. So as the person who was negotiating that ceasefire has said, right. it's a preemptive strike against the ceasefire. Against the ceasefire. Yes. So how, do, how does one read this? this? Does it mean that Israel needs war to continue at a low level in order to hold its population into the kind of genocidal policies it has yeah. adopted? Do you think that, that is its political look, requirement? Uh, look, I don't know. Um, uh, what is very eerie about this is, and I have no evidence, but I'm just wondering if the delivery of that to Jabari was not the point at which they found out where he was. Well, okay. That this was, in fact, itself a ploy to get him more and more exposed to the intelligence networks of Israel. That Israel was never serious about it to start with about this long-term ceasefire. So it appears then that one target, of course, is the election in which now Absolutely. Avidgar, Lieberman and uh, Netanyahu have combined to a very right-wing, uh, I mean, within Israel, it's difficult to say who's more right-wing, but certainly this is the more this fascistic, is the far right. This this is the far right. right. So the far-right agenda, and the far-right agenda really needs a warlike situation all the time in order to rally its population behind it. So that's... Again, again, I am confused about that. Uh, a between the two of them, they have really got the majority. And the Labour Party is in such doldrums that as soon as they started bombing Gaza, their chief made two very significant statements. In one, he says that people make a mistake when they describe Labour as a party of the left. We are not a party of the left. And then he congratulated Net Netanyahu for finally taking the initiative that he needed to take to do all this in Gaza. So he has lined up entirely with them. And so has Khadima. Uh, so has Khadima. 
So, uh, I mean, but, but my sense is that Qadima and Labour were in such bad shape anyway, that fusion of the two parties had already guaranteed the election for them anyway. So they didn't need it? Uh, they didn't need it, but, you know, I mean, uh, if you can win, win by 60%, why not win by 80% and do whatever you then intend to do. Uh, so certainly, certainly, uh, elections are certainly a, a, a what I am talking to at this point and what I am trying to think through is what is the would be the logic of a full scale invasion? offensive. Full scale Offen offensive of offensive. the type that took yeah. place yeah. in 2008, right. 2009. Now, on Thursday alone, they killed more Palestinians than the Palestinians have killed Israelis in 13 years. Since Wednesday, there have been close to 300 aerial bombardments across Gaza. Um, how much more full-scale invasion there will be? You know, uh, is it that now it's perfectly possible that on Friday, that is today, uh, the Egyptian delegation will come. They, it will initiate the discussions for a ceasefire. They will make speeches in uh, the Arab League and Security Council and so on. Meanwhile, Israel keeps bombing at this rate. And a week from now, there is a ceasefire for which Egypt is given the credit. Is that the game? So it's, it's very open just how far they intend to go. Is, the other thing I would like to bring up is that they thought that this Iron, iron Dome, the missile shield that they were building, that will effect, effectively protect them. But 50, more than 50% of the rockets have actually gone through. Right. It does seem to indicate that this strategic uh, idea that they can hold off, take out Gaza militarily and protect themselves with this kind of shield is not really going to work absolutely, in the long run. Absolutely. And uh, th there's that. Uh, that's an excellent point. Beyond that, the fact that a rocket that has come from Gaza has fallen so close to Tel Aviv, virtually in its suburbs, uh, is a game changer. Because Tel Aviv bourgeoisie has felt so secure all this time and is having a hell of a, you know, hell of a time completely indifferent to the Palestine issue, as if it does not exist. Uh, the fact that two such missiles actually fell in Tel Aviv um, shows that um, uh, the, the, the missile shield doesn't work. And in fact, these cities are more vulnerable than ever before. And if that is the case, then can they take on Hezbollah? Which has a far greater capacity. Arsenal. Far bigger arsenal, far, far better arsenal. Far bigger arsenal, far, far better arsenal, and far more seasoned personnel. You so, know, you know, know, so the other, other, thing, other, thing, other, thing, other interesting point is that this ability of the Gaza militias, Gaza uh, militants, to strike Israel, as well as, of course, Hezbollah, is only going to go over, grow with time. So, Effective striking power into Israel can only increase and not decrease. So if they want peace, the only way for them to get peace is actually to sit and negotiate, Absolutely. which they're not willing to uh, do. And, and you see, you see, uh, Ruby, the way the media covers the, these things, it is as if after 2008, 2009 invasion, this is the next one. As if there have been four, four, four years in which Israel has not done anything. Israel killed over a hundred people in 2011 in Palestine. It injured around 500 people. There have been, you know, 600 Palestinian casualties in 2011 alone. So, despite this constant bombings, assassinations, this, that, and the other, despite all the blockade, they can't even get medicines. You know, they're, they're heartbreaking stories. I was reading Shomsky's piece. He tells a heartbreaking story about somebody dying because there was no medicine for cancer. Um, and yet their capacity, 
rocket uh, capacity has uh, increased dramatically. Half of Israel is now effectively under the Israel uh, under the uh, rocket and the, and reach. The, the main thing is if you can get to Tel Aviv. That is true. Then it doesn't matter what you know. Rest of the, the other country, half. Yes. It is that you know I don't know sixty miles or ninety sixty kilometers or ninety kilometers something like that that Tel Aviv is from the uh, Gaza from, from the Gaza Strip. If you can endanger Tel Aviv. Uh, and if the Tel Aviv middle classes and upper middle classes can wake up to their own vulnerability, you have changed the terms of the game. Just two other points in what you've just said. One is the fact that in the past, almost all such temporary ceasefires have been broken by Israel. There's a study absolutely, now which says absolutely. that more than 90% of yes. the attacks yes. after a lull has been from the Israeli yeah. side. Every time. Yet the Western media pretends as if it is always Israeli retaliation and it is always as if the Gaza have attacked. I consider it as a complicity in war crimes. I, I, I really do. It's not a rhetorical position. I really do that this is a complicity in, in war crimes. And this has been going on for decades now. The second point is that you pointed a bit earlier. That it's even this time there is an Israeli minister now who has said we should attack in a way that the civilian population flees from Gaza. So that could be, of course, a temporary agenda as well to make the people leave for Egypt. But even if we think it's not a tenable one. This, this, is, this is a permanent agenda. You know, this is a permanent agenda. Uh, and, you know, that, that is the agenda behind the starvation of, you know, uh, this minimum nutrition availability per capita as if that minimum gets to everybody in Gaza in equal measure you know this sort of thing uh, you know uh, 400 trucks of, of um, truckloads of food used to come into Gaza before this blockade began in 2006 and now 60 65 are being allowed uh, that starvation is a constant um, pressure for people to flee. Um, this la lack of medicine and so on, sanctions and, and all that. Um, so th th that is there. And that is what I was saying that even now you see the same pattern in, in bombings. That the bombings are all over Gaza. Um, from the, into the areas that are farthest from, uh, from Israel and where there are no missile batteries. Uh, so that is again terrorizing the population. Larger agenda. Right. Uh, either you flee or you terrorize them in such a way that they're incapable of lifting their heads. Uh, it's, it's, it's certainly certainly mass terror. Certainly mass terror. We'll come back for a second installment of this discussion. Be with us when we discuss Gaza again. <laughs>